Paul says here, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judged that if one died for all, then we're all dead. So if you were to sum up the reason why we should go soul winning and why we should knock the doors and, and go get the gospel to everyone, you would sum it up in love. I mean, 1 Corinthians 13 says the greatest of these is charity. Love is the reason why we should go soul winning. You know, not fear, not pleasing man. We should do it out of love. Um, and I'll just cover a couple of those um, in terms of how we can love. You know, number one, and I'll just go to these really quickly, but in John 14, 15, Jesus said here, if ye love me, keep my commandments. You know, he didn't say if you were scared of me, if you wanted a blessing, keep my commandments. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that's the motivation we should have, is that we love Jesus. And what's not to love about Jesus? You know, how much does he do for us? How much has he done for us? How much is he going to do for us? Um, you know, he is worthy of your love. He is worthy of your worship. He's worthy of your obedience. Um, but not only that, if you love me, keep my commandments. We can see here in John 3.16, most famous verse in the Bible, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but everlasting life. We see here that God loved the world so much that he wanted to save the world. And if we want to have that same love of God, don't we want to also love the world and try and get them saved? Um, a couple of others we'll just turn to quickly. It says here, For this is good, verse 3, and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who will, so he wants, he, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And 2 Peter 3.9, I know you guys are familiar with these verses. It says here, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should to come to repentance. So number one, you know, love. A love for God. But what else? A, what about a love for our church? A love for the people here? Uh, we see here in 1 Peter 5, Peter writes here, The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. So that's a, a charge to us who are in charge to have the right perspective of how we lead God's church. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, so you're not there to just be lording over everyone and commanding everyone around, but being in samples to the flock. So an important part of being a bishop, of being an elder and a leader in a church is that you are an example to everybody else. But it's not just my job, it's your job as well to be an example to the people here. So that's one way, if you go soul winning, you'll love your church because you'll set that example. You'll encourage each other. Uh, number two, it's a way that you can teach others, right? Because if you take somebody out soul winning, you can take somebody who's new to soul winning, you, know, you can learn off each other and you can teach each other as you go out soul winning. You know, when, if you only limit soul winning to uh, you know lifestyle evangelism you know just preaching as you go how do you teach how do you teach somebody that like how, how do you show somebody that's how you do it because you're just doing it as you go people are not with you to learn of you to see you so th there's no way that we can duplicate and and train other soul winners um, because you don't take anybody along with you to do that whereas when we go soul winning we do take somebody along and they hear the question and the answer. It's like a live Q&A for them, isn't it? As they go, people ask questions, you see the objections, and they can learn, you know, how do we answer that? Um, you know, what are the things we can say to them? And, and to keep that conversation going and to um, explain to them how to be saved. I want to turn to this passage in Numbers, Numbers 32. Because another way going soul winning loves, you love your church, by doing that is because it encourages other people to go. Um, look at what we read in uh, Numbers 32, this story of um, the, Reub the Reubenites and the Gadites and I think half the tribe of the Manassites wanted to stay on one side of Jordan. It says, Now the children of Reuben and the children of Gad had a very great multitude of cattle. 
And when they saw the land of Jazer and the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Eleazar the priest and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, Ataroth and Dibon, so these are, are, are locations, and Jazer and Nimrah and Heshbon and Elia and Shebam and Nebo and beyond, even the country which the Lord smote before the congregation of Israel, is a land for cattle, and thy servants have cattle. Wherefore, said they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for a possession, and bring us not over unto Jordan. So they're saying, you know, we've cleared out this land, and it's good for cattle. Is it okay if we possess this land and don't go over the, Jordan, uh, over the river Jordan and possess the land that God has, has promised to us? And look at what Moses said. And Moses said unto the children of Gad and to the children of Reuben, Shall your brethren go to war, and shall ye sit here? And wherefore discourage ye the heart of the children of Israel from going over into the land which the Lord hath given them? So Moses is saying here, well, if, if your brethren go to war, if your brethren go and do the work and you sit around and do nothing, you're going to discourage them in the work that they're doing. And likewise, if you get involved, you're going to encourage them. And that, thank God, is what they ended up doing because they said later on, we won't read it, that, you know, well, we'll set up here and, and, and build houses and, 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 and set up our farms and whatever here. But when we go to war, we will go with our brethren because they didn't want to discourage the heart of the children of Israel as they went into battle. Because we go into a battle as we go out soul winning. And if you don't get involved, you're going to discourage people. So get involved and encourage uh, the other people that are going. Look at this verse in uh, 2 Corinthians. 22. <clears throat> Paul saying here, Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. In deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I've been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. And look at this, beside those things which are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. So Paul is saying here, you know, he's going through all this tribulation and persecution and trouble. And he says, you know, on top of that, I've got the care of all the churches. I've got the worry and the, and the, and the I guess, the stress and, the, and the, the, the concern of God's people. And the point I wanted to make there was, you know, soul winning is already hard enough, isn't it? You know, to go out there in the heat or in the cold, knock the doors and, 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 and try and start that conversation. It's not something we naturally want to do. It's already hard enough. So, you know, let's not make it even harder, you know, by, by discouraging people, not being involved and, in, you know, not, not getting on board and, you know, ha having discouragement from within the church. Um, there's enough discouragement outside of the church to you know, we don't want to have to worry about that discouragement coming from within the church. But what are some other ways that it'll, it'll love your church? You know, you'll get to know your church better because when you go soul winning, if you're on board, the fellowship's probably going to be sweeter because you have more in common. And then when you go out there and knock doors together, you get to know each other because you talk as you go. Um, you have better fellowship. And you know what? One way you can love, you know, members of this church is who knows that you may knock on the door of their loved one and get a chance to talk to their loved one that they didn't get a chance to talk to. And a couple of other reasons that I'll go through. You know, what about love? You know, obviously this is the, the obvious one, but love for the unbeliever. Because hell is a real place. Jesus said, if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. For it is better for thee to enter into uh, life with one hand than having two hands to enter into hell fire, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where the worm dieth not, and the fire is never quenched. So hell is a real place. And the Bible says, you know, how shall they hear without a preacher? 
So this is the obvious way that we can love those that you know, are unbelievers or even love those that are in a church that are not saved. Because how many people do we talk to that go to a church but still think works salvation? I wanted to show you this passage in, in Judges. In Judges 6. Verse 12, um, about Gideon here. It says here, and the, Lord of, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. So what is Gideon saying there? He's saying, and if God is with us, why are we going through all this trouble? And sometimes we have, we have that thought, right? If God is with us, you know, you know, why isn't he doing anything about this world? Why isn't he doing anything about all the people going to hell? Why isn't he doing uh, something about it? Well, look at what he says here in verse 14. And the Lord looked upon him. So he looks at Gideon and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? So here is Gideon looking at all the stuff that's going on around him and saying, What is God doing about it? And God said, You, you are what I'm doing about it. He looks on him and says, go in this thy might, singular, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites, have not I sent thee. So what is God doing about this? Well, he sent you. Is that not maybe why you exist in this world? To preach the gospel to the people that you know? To be part of this church? That's what God is doing about it. So the question is, if you don't do it, who else will go? You know, if, if Gideon just refused to go, would, would somebody have delivered Israel at that time? You know, maybe God would have just sent somebody else, right? Maybe God would have just sent somebody else and then it's just on you to, you lost that blessing. You lost God using you in that way and, and getting those rewards that God had prepared for you. So love for God. Love for your church. Love for the unbelievers out there. And last of all, you know, what about love for yourself? What are some, some benefits that you can get from going soul winning? Um, well, obviously, there's the eternal rewards, right? The eternal rewards of, of working for Jesus and Him blessing us and rewarding us when we go to heaven. Um, you know, the crowns. I'll just show you this because I'll just show you in Philippians 4.1. Paul says, Therefore, my, belo uh, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Um, I'll just show you as well in 1 Thessalonians 2. Oops. Is it 1 Thessalonians 2? Is it 1 Thessalonians or 2nd? Oh, it might be 2nd Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians 2.19. Oh, maybe I've got that wrong verse. No, I won't go there. But there's a verse in the Thessalonians where he says, you know, ye are my, my crown and, and my crown of rejoicing. So the fact that we're going to get crowns and we're going to get those rewards in heaven, it's interesting that one of those crowns is people. It's people that we're going to win to the Lord. Um, number three. See, if you go soul winning it ensures that you are investing some time winning the loss, doesn't it? Because it's so easy to just get carried about with the cares of this world. You know, we all have jobs, we all, we're all busy, we all have things to do, and we don't want to be a thorny ground here, do we? We don't want to be uh, that seed that, you know, we're saved and it grew, but it grew amongst thorns and it choked the word that it became unfruitful, that we bring no fruit to, to perfection. You know, for yourself, if you go soul, soul winning, you'll learn as well when you go and teach. When you go out and you teach people the gospel, you'll learn more. 
You know, some things that I, that I really love about soul winning is, you know, when I go out and I tell people about the love of Jesus and I tell them what they've done for him, I am reminded about how much God loves me. And that's a, that's a real blessing for me. You know, I'm reminded, you know, how fortunate I am to be saved and how many people are out there that are not saved. What else? You know, for a brief moment when you go soul winning, you're not focused on your own problems. You're not focused on yourself. Maybe you've got some things going on in your life that are not so ple pleasant. But when you go soul winning, it's a time where you're not thinking about you, you're not thinking about how hard you have it, but you're focused on others. You know, when I go soul winning, I'm always um, learning new things. I'm always learning other questions that people have, how to do things, how not to do things. I'm learning from other people, you know, better ways to explain things. You know, when other people share and they're explaining things, it's great because I'm always growing and I'm always learning as well. And you know, another reason, you know, I know God is pleased. You know, I know that God is pleased that I'm trying to be fruitful, I'm trying to win souls. You know, it brings God a lot of glory that we bring forth fruit. But you know, like we covered before, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we have all these great reasons to go soul winning. But like Paul says, necessity is laid upon me. Um, so at the end of the day, it's our duty. You know, it's your duty to go out and to win those souls. So let's do it. You know, love... You know, we talked about love being the principal thing. Love is the reason why we ought to win souls. Love is the reason why we ought to do anything for God. That's why God gives salvation freely. He gives salvation freely because He doesn't want us to serve Him because we're going to hell. He loves us. He wants us to be part of His family. It also gives us the liberty. The fact that salvation is by grace, it gives us the liberty to serve God out of love because it means that we have the choice not to serve God. Right? So we, have the, we can make that choice to serve God. And you know, love is something that you decide to do, isn't it? You know, the feelings will come. Hollywood wants to turn love into an emotion, into a sensation. But we know from the Bible that love is a choice. Love is something that you do for other people, even if you don't feel like doing it. Right? And this is what the thought I want to leave you with is, you know, we need to grow to the point where you do the right things because it's right to do and not because you feel like doing it. Because, you know, that's what babies do. That's what children do. Babies and children, they don't do things because, you know, it's painful or it's inconvenient or it's not pleasant to do. But, you know, as, as, as children of God, we need to grow to the point that we do things out of love and we do it even if it's not pleasant to do. We just do it because it's right. Amen? So 